had a mishap a couple of weeks ago and a rock punched a hole in my stator cover so it's got to go and my my new one finally got here took it about two weeks to get here so still all things considering these days with shipping problems and everything so let's get into it Lana is washed she is not clean had to get some of the dirt and the dust off of here before I pop this stator cover off. So I don't want any of it to fall down inside. I've got enough problems with this thing as it is right now. It's marking where the ship lever is right now because I'm gonna take just this bolt off to slide the, the ship lever off so I can get at this bolt to take this cover off. So I have to be able to get behind here. Eight millimeter. It was time for an oil change anyway. Okay, so that bolt wasn't even tight and neither was this one. That's concerning. Shop manual recommends crisscrossing when you tighten these up. So I am going to do the same when I take them off. Shop manual also recommends, or also says to unplug the sensors and everything. Um, I don't see where I need to do that. I did connect the, disconnect the uh, battery, however. So I don't wanna have this thing have power to it and when I undo one of the sensors, it screws something up or I short it out worse. But I have enough play to get all this stuff off past the wires. This wire here, I'll be able to get it out far enough to get this wire undone from where it goes in to the case. We'll see how it goes. I will be putting blue thread lock on these when I put them back in. And normally I'm about you know, the strong arm torque specs. For this, however, I will be very properly torquing it down with torque wrench. So these are only about nine, well, they are nine foot pounds of torque. So you wanna be very careful. Definitely follow the, the recommendations when you're putting bolts into your engine. Because this cover, it's a stator cover and attaches directly to the to the lower case, the actual block of the engine. So if you cross thread something, or if you over torque it and strip it, you are well and truly screwed. You're buying an engine, or you're gonna try and put some Gila coil in there to try and fix it. Let's get something ready to lay this on. So I'll do my work right here. There we go. One thing you do not want to do is grab something and pry in between the case and the engine because then you're going to groove up the, the surface that's supposed to marry together with the, with the liquid gasket. If you do something like that, make sure it's made out of plastic so you can pry it. Just like that. There's two pins. See, and I'm fighting the magnetism of the stator that's in here too. So there's also that. There's two guide pins here and down here that guide this thing on that you have to work your way off of. Like that. Make sure there's no parts or pieces down in there. This is the stator, by the way, if you didn't know. This is the wire and sensor that makes it work. That's how 
your bike keeps itself charged up and all the little doodads and nanny modes working. Now if you look, there is the puncture from the inside. Doesn't look like any of the metal chunked and tore off. It's like it just bent and cracked. So good to go. And I didn't see anything, any chunks of anything down in the bottom. So got lucky. All right, now what we're doing is I'm gonna go around all this mating surface and clean off the ceiling compound so I get a nice smooth surface. I'm just taking off the extra with my fingers, but <clears throat> you don't want to use a metal scraper on this and mar up the surface. I'm just using an old card, plastic card, and just scraping away. When you're pulling off pieces, don't let them fall down inside of your engine. The more time you take to do this, the better it will turn out and the less likely you will have leaks. You don't want to take all this time to do this. Get the thing replaced for whatever reason, but you only want to do it once, right? This is a rubber grommet that fits into this V-groove right here. And I got to put sealant on that to seal all the way around this and in that, because that's how the wires get into the stator cover. It's worth mentioning that I already swapped over this plug and this plug before I took the old case cover off. Careful because they both have O-rings on them. Just like that. Thread these in by hand. Don't be in a hurry and use power tools. You will strip the threads. dry it off of their oil so I can put thread locker. Again, start them by hand. Brought my box of disposable gloves out here. I didn't want to get all oily and dirty. You can see how well that's working out. Now it's time to get out the torque wrench. Nine foot pounds of torque for every bolt that I just put in. The two for the, for the sensor and controller and nine for each of the five five millimeter head hex bolts I just put in or Allen bolts, sorry. Yes, you are supposed to torque these down in a pattern, in a cross pattern, so you don't warp anything. Now it's time for the terrifying part, torquing it down properly. This is nine foot-pounds. All right. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for about an hour. Then I'm gonna put uh, some oil in it and check for leaks. If there's no leaks, I'll put some more oil in it, check for more leaks. Still no leaks, so I'll top it off and fire it up. Make sure she's not leaking anywhere she's not supposed to. If she is, it's just a matter of, I just didn't put enough gunk on there and I'll just have to take the cover back off clean off the gunk and do it again so it's not a huge deal it's just an extra hassle so hopefully i got it right the first time and as soon as i'm sure that the engine is golden good to go i'm putting the new crash bars on the mid bars and the engine bars by outback motor tech um not not the upper bars i decided against getting the upper bars it's just i mean if i'm hitting stuff that high up on my fairings and stuff I probably I'm probably in the wrong place anyway so and I'm not planning on hanging hanging any auxiliary lights on my 
on my bike anyway. Moment of truth time. Well, I'm not hearing any funny noises out of the engine. Must mean there actually wasn't any pieces or parts in there that I may have missed. That's the thing I was most concerned with. So I'm gonna let it uh, warm up and see if I see any seepage or leaks. It's been uh, two days now. I would have done this yesterday, but I was feeling a little bit under the weather, so I just went to bed when I got home. But uh, two days now and still no drips or seepage around my around the uh, seal that I put on there. So I'm gonna let it warm up and see how she does. Well, it looks like I did the job right. Bike got nice and warm. Ran it for a bunch of minutes. It's sitting there right now. Turned off, still no dripping, no, not even any so much as seeping down low or anything, and there wasn't any weird noises coming out of the engine, so good to go.